the flow of receiving in your life. Dear women and men, I am the earth who speaks. I greet you from my heart, a heart that beats within you. I flow through your body and am with you, and I want to support you and give you what you need. You are connected to me in and through your body, I continually send you signals as an invitation. Listen to me, I am speaking to you through your body. Take a moment now of rest and relaxation so you can feel my presence in you. Your consciousness is light, and you can imagine it as a kind of beam. This shaft of light can focus in a variety of ways to allow the light to shine forth. Your consciousness is a concentration of awareness that is neutral in itself, because there is no thought process in it, in the sense of judging or ordering. It is a more neutral, objective way of being, and you are that consciousness. That consciousness has descended into the body that you now have, the one you live through right now. Fill your body with your consciousness, by starting with your feet. Let your attention flow through your feet, without any expectation or motive. Your feet find that attention wonderful. They bathe in your awareness. Feel light flow along the soles of your feet, and through your toes and heels. Feel how the light relaxes you. Let it travel upward as you focus your attention on your ankles, your calves and knees, and up through your thighs to your hips and pelvis. And let your light flow into the area of your abdomen. Take your time doing this, so you really feel anchored in your body. Feel the light of your consciousness flow in gentle currents, rippling through your legs and your abdomen. Feel how your mind comes to rest, and become fully aware that you are consciousness, you are light. If there are thoughts, take notice of them in the same way you would notice external sounds, such as the barking of a dog outside. You are not the barking of a dog and you are not your thoughts. You are the consciousness that is aware. Feel the open space that is your consciousness. You are that space, the space between your thoughts, between the many sensations and stimuli in your head and your body. Feel how free that consciousness is. It looks at all these sensations and playfully interacts with them. When your light is so casual and free, when it connects in openness with your body, the earth part of you is nourished. This is the most healing light that you can ever receive, the light of your own soul, your own consciousness. This light has healing power, so allow it to flow to a place in your body where you have stored tension, the place that you recognize as a vulnerable spot in your body. Again without any judgment, and very objectively, allow the light to flow to it. This is how balance is restored. Today, I want to speak about the flow of receiving in your life. The deepest form of receiving is to accept yourself as you are. With the light that is in you, you look at your humanity, your feelings, your emotions, your fears, or your stubbornness. You surround them with this gentle and objective light. Only then do you create the fertile bedding that is needed to receive. The deepest desire in a human being is to be embraced, to be seen lovingly, to be recognized, to be enclosed in the arms of an unconditional loving mother. That gives security and tranquility. In that security, in that restful repose, you begin to radiate. You are who you are, naturally, as a flower that emerges from the bud. When its bedding is fertile, the flower comes forth and begins to bloom naturally with its own radiance. It is meant to be in this life that you begin to feel that unconditional love for yourself. This is a great challenge, because there lives in human beings an ingrained tendency to look for love outside themselves. Fear and uncertainty drive you to search beyond yourself. You try to nurture yourself by way of external energies, so as to feel satisfied to feel embraced, and to belong. But your path is a different one. Your deepest and most holy command is to accept yourself regardless of all external influences, to embrace yourself with that loving light that you are. And that includes those deep and dark layers that you would rather hide away and do not want to experience. The instrument with which you can love, accept, and embrace yourself is already within you. It is the light of which I spoke above, the awareness that you are. Feel it for a moment deep in your abdomen. It is a light that is beyond this world, and is not bound by time and space or form. 
It is an eternal light that is completely your own and unique. Feel your own light. You have allowed the light of your consciousness to circulate through your legs and into the area of your pelvis and abdomen. I ask you to now take the light higher, to the area of your solar plexus, which runs through your stomach. Allow the light to flow through here very objectively and calmly. The solar plexus is a very important center. A few days ago, I talked about how you are acting as an intermediary between the power of the heavens and that of the earth, between the flow of your soul and that of your body. Your solar plexus is literally at the center of that interaction. In a way, it is the mediator. The earthly personality that you are finds its foundation here. I would like to tell you about that earthly personality. In one sense, the earthly personality is a kind of navigator who has to deal with many different influences, and who must integrate, in a balanced way, the inspiration from above, from the soul, with the emotional forces from the inner child. The earthly body has to take all that in, along with the external influences, people, situations, challenges. The last time I spoke, I discussed two kinds of influence that can throw you off balance and cause disruption. One was fear and the other was control, the wanting to manipulate. If you now look at the center of the solar plexus you can imagine that this is the seat of the ego, that part of you that must mediate between all these influences and flows, and take action in this world of time and space, of material form. I do not see the ego as something bad. I see it as a necessity given that is needed in this world in order to get all the different energy flows in balance so you can express yourself here in this earthly environment. It enables you to give and to receive. Now, there are roughly two pitfalls for the ego, which is centered in your solar plexus. The ego can either make itself too small or it can make itself too big. If it makes itself too small, it retreats energetically into your solar plexus and finds itself in a tense state of fear, anxiety, and worry. It thinks constantly that it can't, that it is not good enough, that you need others, and that you are powerless. Look within yourself to see if you recognize that type of ego. See if amidst the major influences that you encounter in life, the soul power, the emotional urgings of the inner child, the pressures from the outside world, you often have the feeling that everything is too much for you. See if your ego evokes fear and wants to hide, or if you have difficulty taking up personal space, or if you look for excuses or ways to escape this reality. Those are forms of too small an ego that is ruled by fear, or is sometimes even traumatized. Now there is also the possibility of a too big an ego. That also makes itself felt in the area of the solar plexus. A too big ego feels somewhat bloated and forced, it wants too much. A too big ego overestimates its ability to set things to its own hand, to shape and direct the world. It thinks continually, I need to organize this, I want to settle this, or things won't work out without me. It wants to keep control and in this way it limits its own possibilities. Because when the ego wants to exert too much control, it irrevocably closes off the flow of impulses from the soul. You can say there are blinders on, or tunnel vision, when you want to control things too much from a too big an ego. Also, a big ego often has little connection with the inner child. The emotions and the emotional signals that emerge from the child are often ignored or seen as too burdensome. The ego wants to move forward to its goals. It keeps you stuck in its tunnel vision. Look inside yourself to see if you recognize this trait. See if there have been times in your life when you clung to the goals of your ego, afraid to let go. Usually, both aspects of ego are found in most people. Sometimes it is the case that for one person there is a greater emphasis on the aspect of too small an ego, while for another it is the aspect of too big an ego that is playing tricks on them. But in both cases, you will eventually become cut off from your heart, your soul, and your emotions. The way to get back to your center, to allowing the restoration of balance, and toward reopening the channel to the soul and the inner child, is by looking at yourself lovingly and observing, in an objective way, what you are doing. Do you feed yourself with disparaging and oppressive thoughts?
Do you make yourself small? You then create a story around that idea that things cannot be otherwise and that it is okay that way. Examine the story in detail. Look at it carefully to see how that story is ruled by fear, by an ego that does not dare to take up personal space, to trust itself and its own strength. Surround that ego with love, understanding, and gentleness. When your ego goes too much in the other direction, when it refuses to let go and insists on determining and ruling everything, then become aware of this belief structure, but do it with a gentle and understanding gaze. Laugh about how you make a mess of things when you stubbornly and obstinately stick to a tunnel vision. Let yourself be pleasantly surprised by new possibilities. Remember that it is often a virtue not to know something, to be open to the new. Why do I speak today about these two forms of an unbalanced ego? Because it is the key to being able to receive what life wants to give to you. You disconnect from the receiving flow by making yourself either too small or too big. By seeing these tendencies in yourself and smiling at them, you naturally come back to your center. Feel that for a moment. Envision that behind or beside you is your soul and before or beside you stands your inner child. Feel the great and wise power of your soul, who knows so much more than you can with your human mind. Trust her. Trust him. Imagine that in your solar plexus lives a small figure, a man or a woman, a figure that represents your ego, and look at it very objectively. Does that figure reach forward and try to order everything? Or does that figure back away because it is all too much, too overwhelming, and calls up too much fear within it? Look what movement your ego is tempted to make toward or away from. Finally, imagine that your ego is balanced and that this figure in your solar plexus is in an upright, standing position. It is connected with your soul and the heavens from above, and with your body and the earth from below. Feel how supportive and liberating that is for your ego, for your personality. Everything becomes freer and more fluid. It is a gentle flow of unconditional love. Allow this flow to happen, and allow it to uplift you. Channeled by Pamela Kribbe www.yeshua.net